Uh, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want to thank you so, so much for being here today with me. Uh, so my name is Hum, originally from Vietnam. I just finished my master from Tel Aviv University with Dr. Gideon Winter. He's here today with me. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the response of invasive and native uh, population of the Siras Halophila stipulacea uh, with the climate change. Uh, this is part of my master thesis. Uh, so first of all, I want to give you a brief uh, introduction about the Halophila stipulacea. So this is a small tropical seagrass species. And uh, where can we find the Halophila? So take a look at the map of the world seagrass distribution. And this is where we are, the Gunam Akaba, actually in the Gunam Elat, tip of Gunam Akaba, the rest here. And uh, here is how we can find the Halophila in the Gunam Elat, uh, when the Halophila form an uh, intensive meadow uh, in a tree side along the Israeli coastal area here. And if we go by snorkeling very shallow water, we can see the meadow from something like this. And now I want to uh, talk to you about the invasive story of the Halophila stibulacea. So the Halophila are native to the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. Uh, because of uh, the opening of the Suez Canal, uh, it started invading to the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and right now, it had invaded up all the way up to Italy here. And surprisingly, in 2000, 2002, people found the Halophila in, also in Caribbean Sea. And just after 10 years, it has suppressed uh, all the way to all the Caribbean islands. And there is a study from Cari Caribbean Sea showing that the Halophila is uh, pushing out the local seagrass species by monopolizing the space. So there's no chance for the local species to recover after they were pushing away because of the climate change. Uh, and then there is a, uh, a long-term monitoring data of the sea surface uh, water temperatures from both the Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea. Uh, in the red dot, you can see there is a summer temperatures, and in the blue dot is the winter temperatures. And what we can see clearly from here is in both the seas, uh, the sea surface temperatures are warming up very quickly. And, and actually, we have the rates of the warming in the Mediterranean Sea are uh, double the amount of the Red Sea. So we have the Halophila stipulacea is uh, native to the Red Sea, playing very important function uh, in the region. But in the Mediterranean Sea, they are considered at very potential harmful uh, invasive uh, serious species. So uh, we were asking ourselves that, so what are going to be the future for both the native and invasive population? Uh, so in order to answer that question, we went to uh, Cyprus and we went to Elat, bring, uh, collect a sample and bring together in, uh, to our lab in the uh, Negev Desert. I always talk with everybody that we are doing marine science in the middle of the desert. <laughs> uh, and then we have the uh, microcosm experiment. This, this is my supervisor, Dr. Gideon Winter. And then if we zoom in one tongue here, uh, we divided the tongue into two parts, and we have the invasive one in one side and the native one in, in, the, in the other side. And what we did, we exposed the plant to the in, increasing of the temperatures. So I, I, we exposed the plant to 29 and 32 degrees, try to simulate the increasing of the temperatures um, uh, with the climate change. And we want to see uh, the whole picture, how the plants respond to the increasing of the temperatures. So we did a lot of measurement, including plant performance, biochemistry, photo photosynthesis, and also gene expression. And I want to show you some of the results uh, here. So first of all, this is the plant performance results, horizontal growth. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, in uh, the control and 29 degree, the increasing of the temperatures uh, doesn't uh, affect uh, the, uh, the, the growth of the plants. Uh, but in native plants, uh, after 28 days, uh, even start from uh, 14 days, the plant reducing the horizontal growth rate. So up to like 28 days, they even stop growing. And they couldn't grow even in the recovery phase when we already uh, re decrease the temperatures here. And the second thing is the biochemistry uh, result. We can see here uh, the native plants reduce the, uh, the chlorophyll A and B content uh, under the high temperatures, while the invasive plant, another way around, increasing 
the chlorophyll content uh, in the 32 degree. And here is the uh, photosensitivity, uh, the maximum quantum, uh, photochemical quantum U of photosensitivity too, Fv by M. So we can see um, in invasive plant, it, uh, all the temperatures, uh, we, we don't see any uh, different among the temperature. But in the native plant, we see that along with the increasing of the temperatures, the Fv by M value were decreasing, and then when we ramp back the temperature to the control temperature 26, uh, it came back the ability to do photosyn that, uh, photosynthesis. And now I want to show you the molecular results. So this is a uh, molecular results, uh, the gene expression of the SOD, which is one of the antioxidant gene. So we can see uh, in this, this is a time point when I con collect the sample. So we can see, first of all, under the high temperature, both native and invasive plant, they show a higher level of expression of the antioxidant uh, genes, SOD. But we can also see clearly from here that the level of expression from the invasive plant were much, much higher comparing to the uh, native plant. And then what happened in the recovery phase? We see during the understrep, the native, uh, the invasive plant uh, express a lot of antioxidant species so they can cope with the increasing of the temperatures. And just right after the recovery phase, they just stop express the antioxidant. Uh, why is it important? Because uh, in order to produce the antioxidant, it's also very expensive for the plants. So if you have the ability to produce as much as you, qu you want, as much as you need, and right after when you donate it, you can stop producing, so it can save you a lot of energy for that. So uh, out of our result, uh, we have some uh, conclusion. First of all, the native plant will suffer uh, under thermal threat, and the invasive plant will, are doing so well. They, they grow faster, they became bigger, uh, and they survive. Uh, because of that, we conclude that, uh, we predict that in the future nearby, the native plant will be suffered, the meadow in the elat, we will, will be disappear, not, we, 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 do, we don't want that, but uh, it could be happen. Uh, and while in, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, the invasive plant will continue to uh, develop and develop and spread all the way westward throughout the, on the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Do you think the SOD might have turned off earlier in the 90s as opposed to the invasive? Because you had a really strong response from the super hot to those two, three days when it was elevated, but you did see it for the, the native one. Do you think your timing at which you did the, the measurement, if you had it measured earlier, you might have seen the native with more SOD? Because it's got reactive oxygen and it's damaged. You're talking about the, the SOD, right? It's worse here. We see significant different. It's not yeah, that not that much, but uh, it's still it's still higher than the control. The control is here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it's very important that we see that the ability of the invasive plant to produce much more uh, uh, antioxidant. That's how they, even we expose them to the same high temperature, 32 degree, very high. But the invasive plant, they can survive uh, very well under the high, uh, high temperatures, while the invasive, uh, the native plant, we see they stop growing after like two or three weeks. Actually, I, I can tell you that uh, at the beginning, we want to expose the plant uh, in three weeks. And after two weeks of the experiment, because I work together with the plant every single day, and I realized that, well, maybe if I continue, after three weeks, we lost all the plant, and there's nothing to do for the recovery phase. So I asked my supervisor, and we decided to stop the thermal uh, way, heat way here after two weeks. Yeah. It's more like very strong response and different response between two populations.
and all the results are um, showing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's quite difficult because this plant is subtitled seagrass. So it's hard to see in the nature, uh, we, we, we can get the, the real, like, um, in, the mid, in, the, in this time, to, to find the high temperatures in the nature, to, to test this kind of experiment. But we, I think, we could find some very shallow, I mean, like half a meter because the sea grass they grow very shallow water, so could be, could maybe we 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 can think about that. Yeah. Yes. Ah, so the maximum temperatures in both sides are about 28. 28. Yeah. In both sides. In both sides. Yeah, in both sides. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.